I so wish that I had been able to fulfill your hopes to lead the country in a different direction, but the nation chose another leader, and so Ann and I join with you to earnestly pray for him and for this great nation. Thank you, and God bless America. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. There are a lot of disappointed faces in America today, and just as many who are not. The polarized America we've been used to seeing has not changed with the re-election of Barack Obama, the man who offered hope and change four years ago with that theme. This time around, he wasn't about hope and change. He was about asking people to take revenge on the Republicans. The economy is in sad shape in the U.S. You know it. Every American knows it. Truth is, the economy started to crater just a few months before Obama was sworn in four years ago. The stock market crash of 2008 happened less than three months before that November election. I don't want to rehash the collapse of one of America's largest investment banks, Lehman Brothers, the collapse of the housing market, the stock market crash, and the bailouts of the Wall Street banks. The point I need to make here is that all of this was happening before Barack Obama put his hand on the Bible and swore an oath to the United States Constitution. In January of 2009, when he swore that oath, Ever since then, he's been blaming the past for the present. And that's something I've strongly disagreed with. But when I read the exit poll research from last night, I cannot help but see that the majority of Americans still blame the Bush years for the economic mess the country is still in. Mitt Romney lost last night, not because he was too conservative or too moderate or too Mormon. Mitt Romney lost last night because guilt by association won last night. And so it's time for some Canadian common sense. Mitt Romney is a Republican. In the so-called battleground states, his opponent, the Obama campaign, and its supporters in the blue-collar unions, public sector unions, the media, they were able to make the case that Romney, as a Republican, was going to bring back the policies that wrecked the economy, destroyed jobs, shredded the family balance sheet, made it difficult for the kids of all those hard-working middle-class Americans to find work. That argument was pushed by Bill Clinton at the convention. It's what saved Obama's convention. It's what created momentum for Obama into the campaign. Not surprisingly, the first person Obama called last night after Romney's concession, Bill Clinton. Obama calling Bill Clinton with gratitude and relief. Those who wanted to prosecute Obama and convict him for his withering assault on the U.S. economy will compare that call to Clinton to the call the accused makes to his lawyer to thank him for sparing him from a jail sentence. There are many statistics coming out of last night's election that people will find relevant. But there's one that leaps into the conservative brain and parks itself right behind the migraine and doesn't want to exit. Barack Obama has been re-elected president of the United States with only 40 percent of the white vote. When I was growing up, spending a lot of time in Canada, my home, but also in the U.S., which was like a second home to me, when a candidate for president would only get 40 percent of the white vote, we called him George McGovern. We called him a political loser. The Republican Party has got a very big job to do, convincing the rising tide of non-whites in America to vote for them. When nine out of ten African Americans vote for the Democrat, when 7 out of 10 Hispanic Americans, and they are the fastest growing demographic in America, when 80 percent of the minority vote doesn't want to vote for the Republican running for president, then, well, frankly, as the Apollo 13 astronaut famously said, Houston, we've got a problem. Now, some conservatives will argue the candidate was not conservative enough. and the Moderates will argue he wasn't moderate enough. But as smart Republicans like Jeb Bush the former Florida governor, and Mike Huckabee, the former, former Arkansas governor. As these guys have been warning for years, if the Republicans don't do a better job connecting with minority voters, the path to the White House will become increasingly painful. Now, Canada has a very smart, talented, insightful man who has the job of prime minister. Stephen Harper got the message many years ago that unless Canadian conservatives found ways of getting non-whites to vote for them, the so-called new Canadians to vote for them, the Liberal Party would continue to dominate federal politics. And so Stephen Harper and his conservative all-stars, led by Jason Kenney, 
worked tirelessly to build those bridges to the various ethnic communities, which the liberals began taking for granted, seeing them as liberal franchises. Well, they weren't liberal property. They were free people, free to make a better choice, a Canadian conservative choice. The Republicans could do very well to look at Stephen Harper's playbook today and tomorrow and the next day. And that's Canadian common sense.